Okay, we're gonna finish inscribe angles and all that you need to know with inscribe angles, and we're gonna practice those today. Um, I'll be coming by after lunch to see that you have all three note sheets. Yeah. Uh, the pink, white, and green. No, you just need the green one, but I'm checking all three before you leave today. Not the first of the green. Yeah. Yep. So an inscribe angle, uh, I would also highlight it. There's two parts you have to know for each inscribe angle. Um, one, it's an angle with the vertex on the circle. Um, so you need to make sure that the point that is the vertex is on the circle, not inside the circle or outside the circle. It has to be on the circle. So I highlighted the inscribe angle. This yellow angle is your inscribed angle. An example of that would be angle A, C, B, or you could say angle one. So inscribed angle, you gotta be able to identify the, an inscribed angle. And then you have to identify the arc that goes with the angle. The arc is the curve that is inside the angle and the interior of the angle. So the intercepted arc is AB, the green part that I have up here. So you would write AB, and then you would put the curve over the two letters to name its intercepted arc. OK. Adam. So you're going to have to know one, you got to make sure you can see that the vertex is on the circle. And then if it's on the circle, it's an inscribed angle that has a different relationship than the angles we did before. And then you need to find the intercepted arc to that angle. Now, the rule that we're going to use today, uh, oh, right there, I'm oh, sorry. If you have an inscribed angle, our yellow angle that we have here, whenever you have an inscribed angle, and I'm going to use the abbreviation for angle or the symbol for angle. That angle is going to equal to half the intercepted arc. I know I'm running out of room. All right, so the yellow angle is going to equal half the green arc. Whatever the intercepted arc is, its measure, the angle is going to be half it. So you need to either be able to divide by two or times two, double it. So get this on your table, in your box. So there are some corollaries that go with this relationship. First, you got to make sure we can see the inscribed angle. So on this next example, I'm going to start with angle three. I'm going to highlight it. That is angle D, G, E. Do you see? that it's an inscribed angle. Why is it inscribed? No, not because it's inside. Where's the vertex? Not inside. On the circle. OK, so D what? Yeah. Huh? Yes, the intercepted arc is the D to the E. It's D to E is the intercepted arc. Alright, so what angle represents angle four? <laughs> the name of the angle. Yeah, D F E. Okay, so so I go D to F. I probably did a different color. Let me fix that. That's gonna confuse you. D to F to E. Do y'all see that angle? Okay, so F, that is the vertex. F is the vertex of the angle. F is on the circle, yes? Okay, so it's inscribed. Okay, now, what was D, F, E's intercepted arc? Yeah, D to E. It's the green arc as well. You see they have the same arc for both angles. 
similar. Yeah. Uh -huh. All right. So because angle three has DF as the arc and angle four has DF as the arc, those two angles are going to be congruent. If they intercept the same arc, then the angles are congruent. So angle three is congruent to angle four because of the arc DE. So try to look at for the intercepted arc for angle one. Good job. GF. I'm going to highlight that. GF goes with angle 1. Okay. Does any other angle have that same intercepted arc? Yes. So now, what do I know about 1 and 2? Yeah. They are going to be congruent because they both have the intercepted arc GF. Angle 1, congruent to angle 2 because GF is the intercepted arc for both of them. The arc that has to be inside the circle, the curve of the circle. All right, so angle one. Is angle one an inscribed angle? Yes. There's the vertex. Is it on the circle? Yes, it's on the circle. Okay. The arc, the intercepted arc for angle one, look what happens. Is that highlighted part? Anything we know about that? It's a semicircle because M is the center. And if I look at this segment right here, what do we call if it goes, a chord goes in the center of the circle? A chord. Goes through the center. Diameter. Diameter. So the diameter cuts the circle in two equal parts, cuts it in half. So I know that this intercepted arc is 180. The rule over here says the inscribed angle is half the intercepted arc. 90. So that means that angle 1, the measure of angle 1, equals 90. It's always half the intercepted arc. So if you have an inscribed angle in a circle and the intercepted arc is a semicircle, which is the 180, then it's always going to be a right angle, 90 degrees. Does that make sense? Okay. Last one, or do you still need that one? Anyone still need this before I switch? Okay, so. All right. We're going to start with angle TSR. What's the measure of angle TSR? 100. Is it an inscribed angle? Yes, because the S right there is on the circle. Okay, what intercepted arc? goes with angle S. Yes, T to Q to R. That is the intercepted arc. This is the key to everything. The key to everything is to see if it's inscribed, if the vertex is on the circle, and then be able to find the arc that goes with the angle. All right, so the rule says that the angle is half the arc. Okay? I have the angle. The angle is 100. So what must be the, the measure of the arc? 200. You double it. If you have the angle, you double it. That will give you the arc. Yes, exactly. Okay. Uh, the rule we did over here. The, the inscribed angle is going to be half the intercepted arc. All right, so if I know that T... QR is 200. What if I went to the other side? Close. 160. What's all the way around a circle? 360. So if that's 200, this has to be 160. Okay. What angle?
correlates, goes with this intercepted arc. Yeah, TQR, right here, the Q, okay? So that angle, because it's an inscribed angle, should be half the arc. So what? If this is 160, this would have to be 80. Mm -hmm. I'm going to help you out. Let me help you out to get to R. If you look opposite each other, Q and S are opposite, yes? So would T and R be, okay? What's the sum of Q and S? 180, so they're supplementary. So that means that T and R has to be supplementary as well. It would be 85. There we go. Minus 360. A circle is 360, so I know that's 200. So if a quadrilateral is inscribed in a circle, then the opposite angles are going to always be supplementary. Yes, which means they equal 180, okay? Opposite angles in, for a quadrilateral inside a circle will be 180, supplementary. Hmm? Yeah, this is going back to fall. Yeah, we're going to use some of the fall stuff. You're right. All right, now, oops, am I missing? Oh, this one is first for y'all, right? Okay, interior angle, okay. An interior angle, let me get to that, all right, is equal to half, one half the sum of the two intercepted arcs, okay? One half the sum of the two intercepted arcs. An interior angle, you need to add this for me real quick. Vertex is not at the center. Okay? We're not if it's an interior angle, the vertex, we can't see a vertex at the center. Yeah, here you go. Now, angle A is the interior angle. Okay, the angle is inside the circle. We should see the angle inside the circle. And it's not the center. Angle A, I could, let's put the angle 1 right here. What do we know about A and 1? Yeah, they equal the same. They're called vertical. Y'all remember that from the fall? Okay, so they are going to be congruent. Intercepted arc is still going to be the same, meaning it still has to be the arc inside the angle. So... If I'm looking at just the A, what part represents the intercepted arc? The X, that curve right there. You see that? If I'm looking at angle 1, where is the intercepted arc? The Y, the part that's inside the angle. Do you see now how we have two intercepted arcs now? Okay, so the rule says that I will add them because it's the sum. I'm now going to add them, and I'm going to take half of it, and it's going to equal the angle. Okay? So, I would add the two angle, the two, excuse me, arcs, and take half of it, and it equals the angle. Interior angle equals half sum of intercepted arcs. What if they both equal? What do you mean? Like the angles? Well, they would, like if I know one, then I know the other because they're vertical. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we're going to put one and two. We don't know the answer. I'm just giving you an example of like if, they, if they're interior angles. Okay. Do we see that the angles are inside the circle? They are interior angles. Is it at the center? No. Okay. What arc intercepts angle one? JL. JL. All right. What arc intercepts angle two? NK. All right. So to find angle one, if I wanted to find angle one, it would equal to one half of taking the arc JL plus 
the arc n k. I would add the two arcs together and then take half of it and it would equal the angle. Okay? So this is whenever the angle is inside the circle and the interior and it's not at the center. Now, there's a different relationship for when we're talking about exterior angle. All right. Now the angle is going to be where? Outside. No. Yeah, outside the circle. Okay, no. Because y'all time is a little shorter. All right, so everyone see that the vertex, the angle is outside the circle? All right, so instead of adding the arcs, we're not going to take the difference of the two arcs. What does difference mean? Subtract. We're going to subtract them. So here's my vertex. Here's the angle. The intercept arcs are still the arcs that are inside the angle. So x is one of the intercept arcs. Where is the other intercept arc? Y. y. So you would have to subtract x from y and then take half of it and divide by 2. Okay? The x the exterior angle, to get the angle measure. Okay, so here again, these are just tan secant. Okay, because the tangent only touches the circle at one spot where the secant intersects the circle at two points, two spots. So I need to know those spots so I can see the intercepted arc. Which arcs are inside the angle? X, one is X, and the other one right here is with the point for the tangent and the secant, which is Y. Can y'all see the two arcs? All right, so whenever you have an X here angle, it is going to equal to one half the difference, yeah, between Y and X, yeah, the intercepted arc. I ran out of room. Yeah, the difference between y and x, yes. Okay? So you subtract them. Are we okay on that? All right, now, get your packet out. Uh, yes, we do. We'll come back. We only have like five minutes. I believe it's page 20. No, it's not page 20. Page 40, sorry. Page 40. Page 40, mm-hmm. Okay, page 40. All right, we're going to do the practice A together, and then you have practice B, which is what I'm going to check. Four things you need to know to do the problems. First thing, if you see a quadrilateral inscribed in a circle inside the circle, then the opposite angles are going to be what? Congruent. Not congruent. If a quadrilateral is inside, here's the circle. If I have a quadrilateral inside. The opposite angles are going to be what? Supplementary. Or you can say equal 180. Okay? I just abbreviate it. If an inscribed angle of a circle intercepts the same arc, okay, then the angles are going to be congruent. Okay? Same arc, same angle. The measure of an inscribed angle is half the measure of the intercepted arc. That's the rule we're going to use to, problem, to find our answers. And then an inscribed angle of a semicircle, if and only the angle is 90 degrees, or a right angle. So these are the four things we need to know to do these problems. So we're going to start with finding the angle or finding the arc. So on this first one, they say, look at angle BAC. Here it is, BAC. Is it inscribed? Yes, because A is on the circle. Who is the intercepted arc? BC. Y'all see the arc is inside the, the angle? All right, so the angle is going to be half that arc. 
Yeah, 30. Okay. So, now they want us to find the arc FE. One forty. How do we get to one forty? No. No. <laughs> yeah, we have the angle of seventy. You double it, that gives you the arc. So it's one forty. The arc and the angle. Remember, they ha the angle has to be half the arc. All right. So let's try this next one. Number six. I H J. We want that angle measure. 45. It's half the arc. Okay. And then GH. 40, yes. You double the angle. Uh, yes or no? Okay. All right. Now look at seven. We gotta find the value of x. So this angle here, MLK, is 90. Yes, that's that rule. So that means that 6x equals 90. Okay. It's 90 because there is a semicircle. That's 180. The angle's half the arc always. Yes, you divide 90 by 6. Yes. Yes. X equals 15. All right, what about 8? Same type of problem. They just turn the triangle a little bit. So what do we know? Yeah, it's 90 again. So we have to write what equation? Uh, 4Z minus 10 equals 90. Yeah, 4Z minus 10 equals 90. Good. Now we're solving for the Z plus the 10. Yeah, equals 125. Yes, Z is 25. Z is 25. All right, last one. They want the measure of angle V, U, S. What is the intercepted arc for V, U, S? These yeah, it's going to be just 42. You see how they have the same arc? They intercept the same arc? So this answer is just 42. They intercept the same arc. Okay. That's the same thing that happens with number 10. They both intercept this arc. So what does that tell me about W and X? They're going to be the same. So that 8A minus 9 is going to equal to 7A plus 1. We have to solve for A first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, solve for A. Yeah. A will equal 10, and then we're going to plug it back in. 71. All right. We're going to stop right there. All right, look at number 11. Automatically, by looking at the picture, you should at least be able to fill in two blanks. E, 120. There we go. What else? Another one can be filled in. Uh, no, no. E, e, e is 90. Oh, I'm sorry. B, B is 120. And then C is 90. Yes, D is 60. E is 90. All right, good. Opposite angles are equal to 180. All right. Which two? Last one. Which two do we need to start with on number 12? We need two that are opposite. F and H are opposite, but we don't have both of those measures. G and I, yeah, okay, so G and I together are gonna equal what? 180, so 8M plus 10M equals 180. 18M, right? Equals 180, so what is M? M is 10, so that means that H would now be 50, I would be G, 100, and F, good job, we're done.
Yeah. Yes. Yes. One of five. Right. 